Good morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, October 6th. Looking at fire potential impacts, none today. We do start to see gusty winds coming in off the Sierra front as well as parts of central Nevada on Wednesday. Similar story again on Thursday. And these winds that we're seeing towards the end of the week are ahead of a very large storm system that will be pushing in with lots of wind and probably lots of precipitation, at least for northern areas uh, this weekend. Smoke situation this morning, you can see it quite prevalent here near the surface across uh, much of the western Great Basin, Nevada. Uh, Some of those southerly winds will start to thin that smoke out later this afternoon at the surface. And similar story at the 6,000 foot level as well, starting to disperse that morning smoke a little bit further north and eastwards. Uh, No precip or lightning past 24 hours. Initial attack is light, but lots of existing fires in all corners of the area from Western Wyoming down through southwest Utah into western Nevada, southern Nevada, everywhere in between uh, fire activity unusual for this time of year. And part of that is how unusually dry we are. You see no precipitation at all, not a drop the past seven days. And percent of normal blowtorch, 0% of normal precipitation for the entire Great Basin. And you can see what it's done to our fuels on the ERC charts. We have record level dry fuels in the 97th percentile here in the purple. You can see across all of Utah, much of uh, Nevada as well. And even up in areas of Idaho where they had some rain about eight to nine days ago and some high elevation snows. You can see those ERCs already going up to the 70th and 80th percentile, even above the 90th percentile across parts of western Wyoming. Our 100-hour fuels critically dry, below 5%, where you see this reddish shade, and just above that, but drying rapidly up in Idaho and western Wyoming, and accounts for our fire activity increase. On the satellite imagery, you see a large high pressure in control, something we normally see on the weather maps in August. Uh, storm track well up into uh, parts of southern and central Canada. That, however, will be changing. Some residual subtropical moisture well off the southern California coast, and some of the stuff here moving onshore across southern California as well. So we'll see how these things play out over the next couple of days. For this afternoon, the high pressure shifts a little further to the east. Still near record warmth, temperatures 10 degrees or more above normal in most areas. You can see our fuels have dry to the critically dry area across the entire region. Our humidity single digits across southern and central areas into the teens in the north. Winds overall fairly light and variable. Now for tomorrow, the high starts to break down. You see this deepening low pressure off the uh, Uh, Pacific Northwest Coast, uh, winds will gradually start to increase. There's a little short wave disturbance here across Central California. Still dry, uh, still very dry humidities here on the left. See some of these winds starting to pick up out of the south. Nothing crazy, just 10 to 20 miles per hour, but with any existing fires in those areas and those dry humidities, that would be a concern. Storm system starts to gather a little strength. It comes in two pieces, one here and a deeper plume of moisture pushing in further from the northwest. Not affecting us yet. We're still critically dry in all areas. Any large ongoing fires will continue to burn. Again, very dry humidities. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here again and across uh, northeastern California starting to come in. It'll be afterwards that the winds really start getting stronger. Three-day precipitation through Friday morning starting to move on shore across Uh, Northern California, but still dry for the Great Basin. Uh, That won't be lasting. Friday, there is a storm system. Two pieces of moisture, one piece breaking off into into Northern California on Friday, another one waiting in the wings. Still dry for us. We could see some higher humidity, uh, moistened fuels a little bit in far northern Idaho. Then on Saturday, this front moves through. and Look at how much moisture pushes in, but it misses most of our southern and far southeastern areas. So you can see where precipitation is expected we have green where higher humidity and maybe some very light precipitation starts we have yellow but where the precipitation misses we will get winds we will stay critically dry and we have high risk for our southern and eastern areas on saturday similar story for the far south on sunday but notice how much more green because a lot of this moisture would have passed across most areas with wetting rains from about the highway 50 corridor on uh, northward As we go into Monday, uh, we finally see that load depart, but there's another wave of moisture pushing into Oregon, about to push into Idaho with more precipitation, maybe far northern Nevada and Utah. 
Um, but you can see uh, the damage here has been done. Significant moistening into the second week of October can sometimes indicate a season-ending scenario, at least for our northern areas. Verdict is still out further south. That's because of precipitation. You see it through here. Heaviest amounts up in the mountains of central Idaho, one inch or more. Uh, same in western Wyoming. But once you get south of... Uh, the I-80 corridor gets a little spotty, and once you get south of the Highway 50 corridor, many areas miss out on the precipitation. So we'll have to wait and see on this scenario. 8 to 14, the outlook shows still somewhat above normal temperatures, but a more moist pattern pushing in for our northern areas. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.